This episode is brought to you by PentesterAcademy.com, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Be sure to check out our latest attack defense gadgets on HackerArsenal.com. Hey everyone, I'm sitting here with Jean Do today. Thank you so much for joining us, I appreciate it. No, thanks for inviting us here. Absolutely. So now, is this your first time at Hardware.io? No, it's the second year we support the conference. Okay, and how did you get involved with the conference in the first place? Uh, we were contacted by some people in the research community that say that they were finding our conference interesting, so we put our nose into it and we decided that's something we want to attend, but we also want to sponsor it because we do believe that hardware security is a big path forward that is a bit ignored these days and has some implication for us as forensic activities, but also to secure the internet in general. And can you tell me what you do for a living currently? So currently I work in Europol in the European Cybercrime Center and I'm the head of the forensic lab where we do lab and research things. Wow, it's incredible. And so just for the average person, could you please describe Europol for me? So Europol is the European Law Enforcement Agency. We're a thousand people strong and we do support member state investigations. So we don't have investigating power. We do try to help our colleagues in the member state to support them with advanced counterterrorism, uh, organized crime, and cyber investigations. Okay. And now, what does a typical day look like for you, if, if you have a typical day, that is? Uh, apart from the bureaucracy, uh, we don't have a very typical day. We have a lot of different operations ongoing that we need to invest into, so plan the operation, run, put some things together, and try to hit the nail. Okay. And would you say that, you know, technology advancement over the years, has that made your job easier or harder? It's our job. So uh, it shouldn't stop. Otherwise, we don't have a job anymore. <laughs> no, really what we do think is that um, technology advancement has brought some good opportunities for law enforcement, but a lot of difficulties. We need, as law enforcement, to adapt very quickly to the threat, but also to uh, all the device that everybody has at home, all the computer changes that demands for everybody some change, but for law enforcement to do this in a very legal way is a real challenge that we have to do and work on every day. That's fantastic, but it's difficult. Yeah. And now looking back, what would you say is one of your proudest or you know, biggest accomplishments in the field? Uh, the biggest accomplishment, I don't, I don't know if I, I would try to mention one as itself, but the, the biggest thing is that we have the trust of the investigators throughout the EU. So the guys that come to us with their most sensitive investigation uh, and say, okay, guys, we're doing this, this, and this. Can you help us? And we know it's very sensitive. So, uh, I mean, you've seen the recent activities on the dark web that have been supported left and right. So... You know, everything in advance, you try to provide good support, you help the country, so it's, we're pretty happy with that. Nice, okay. And just out of curiosity, what made you want to get involved in this field in the first place? I've always been, uh, I'm an engineer by training, so I did some computer stuff when I was young, and uh, when the, the time was to come and build some uh, cybercrime stuff, they looked into people that had some background, and I was already interested by it on the analysis side, I went into it with joy, happiness. Good, that's a good thing. It's rare. <laughs> that, no, no, it's not rare. All the guys working in this are really addicted. The cops that are working in IT stuff, they really like what they do. I mean, you have emails at 2 o'clock a.m. Say, John Doe, I found a solution on this. Hey, no, no, the guys are addicted. It's not a regular job. That's amazing. That's good. And now, you know, given all your years of experience, what do you think is one of the biggest growing threats within the cybersecurity field today? Uh uh, just to have fun, I would say that no brain is a problem in general, yeah. but that's not a threat. No, the big threat we have is, I think, ransomware these years. Uh, it, we said it in the past years. It has come as a something happening in 2017. It will go on. So this is something that is difficult to prevent. Okay, you have your hygiene and all the stuff that people should do. On top of it, I think it's very important that enforcement progresses and we find the bad guys, put them behind bars, seize their Bitcoins and go away. 
Yeah. And is there, what do you think that they could do uh, for prevention measures in the future to prevent things like this? It's simple. I mean, Hacker Arsenal, Pentester Academy, the guys know what they do. But generically, to my aunt or my grandmother, I would say, do your updates. Don't run funny code. Understand what is a code and try not to execute a code you don't understand. Yep. Or, you know. Well, there you have it from an expert himself. Jean, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate oh, thanks it. Thanks for the invite. This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. 